Welcome to the President's Diary, a weekly program where we highlight the work of His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali. The President has sworn in the eight members of the Local Government Commission. During the swearing-in ceremony at the Office of the President, Monday morning, President Ali charged the new commissioners to perform their mandate with the highest level of professionalism, accountability and transparency. Uh, the Office of the Member of the Local Government Commission. Uh, of the Affection or elbow. The President highlighted the importance of the Commission. Development, however, is foremost about improving the livelihoods of people. It is the Executive's intention to ensure that the country's forthcoming development is balanced and, more importantly, safeguarded at all levels of our society. The national level, at the levels of the regions, and at the community level. In order to guarantee such an outcome, it is vital that they are established efficient and effective local government organs to deliver enhanced welfare to citizens, particularly within our towns, villages, and communities. President Ali says his government is crafting policies to give effect to local development. He noted that these policies will ensure the Commission's policies and programs are not obstructed and are implemented without dispute between and within local government bodies. Guyana's continuous economic development over the next decade is expected to result in economic and social transformation. But importantly, economic and social transformation at all levels of our society, of which local government organs and local governance plays a critical part in ensuring that that transformation is administered effectively and efficiently. Meanwhile, speaking on the sidelines of the swearing-in ceremony, the President called on Guyanese to act responsibly to protect themselves and families from COVID-19. His call comes amid an increase in COVID cases. You would have seen that we have stepped up tremendously. The task force has, uh, uh, has been doing more patrols, they're more aggressive. Um, the only other thing now is to have the, the, the courts uh, play a role in sentencing people. But we have really stepped up. The task force is doing a good job. They're out there every single night until 3, 4 in the morning. But people have, the people have the responsibility too. People, Guyanese have to understand this is not a joke. This is their lives they're playing with. You can't put your life in the hands of the task force. President Ali also spoke of the recent incident when citizens were arrested and placed in a Guyana Defense Force bus for breaking the curfew. In a video circulating on social media, some people were seen jumping through the window of the bus in an attempt to escape from the task force. If you look at the, the, the army bus the other night, and... and, and you know, I, I see responsible people sharing this on social media as if it's some big joke. The reckless behavior in that bus, and people who I hold with great levels of responsibility and high levels of education, sharing it as if it's a joke. What they were behaving with in that bus is reckless. It's reckless. Also on Monday, His Excellency received a miniature model of the Bell 412 EPI helicopter, which Guyana received last month. The model was presented by Commanding Officer of the Guyana Defense Force Air Corps, Lieutenant Colonel Courtney Byrne, on behalf of Bell. The government purchased the Bell 412 EPI late last year to strengthen the capacity of the Guyana Defense Force to conduct aerial operations. Muslims are observing the holy month of Ramadan. President Ali, in his message, extended Ramadan Mubarak greetings to the entire Islamic community of Guyana and all Guyanese. The president said the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed our vulnerabilities and helplessness, but Ramadan teaches us the powerful and redeeming virtues of humility, empathy, and gratitude. During this holy month, let us therefore never forget to express our gratitude for God's infinite love mercy and wisdom. Fasting brings us closer to God and grounds us in the desirable values of humbleness and understanding. 
Fasting offers us a path to piety, but requires that we clean our hearts of every form of hatred, envy, and prejudice. The president urged that we strive to live as brothers and sisters and banish hatred, envy, and prejudice from our hearts and from our relations. The principals of Mexican holding company Grupo Industrial Omega paid a courtesy visit to His Excellency on Tuesday, where they highlighted their interest in several investment opportunities. Andres Holzer, Alejandro Garcia, and Federico Martinez met with the head of state at his office. They indicated that their company has investments in different areas, including Duffery, the largest conglomerate of duty-free shops in the world, construction, and oil and gas. Prior to meeting the president, they had indicated via a letter that they were interested in developing the international airports in Guyana and the tourism market. His Excellency has hailed the late Dr. Chedi Jagan as the country's greatest citizen and said his contributions to the fight for democracy will forever be enshrined in Guyana's historical records. The head of state praised the former leader at the annual Chedi Jagan commemorative lecture that was held virtually on Tuesday. He was unapologetic in a forming that socialism could not prevail unless it practiced full democracy. His ideological underpinning was based on democracy. It was based on freedom. It was based on equality. It was based on the creation of a just society. Dr. Jagan, President Ali said, never succumbed or compromised the democratic principle during the 28 years the party was cheated out of office. The head of state added that they were confident that by following Dr. Jagan's example and by staying true to his ideals, that democracy would prevail. Cherry Jagan remains Guyana's foremost Democrat, who possessed unfaltering faith in democracy. He was committed to the ideal of a national democratic state. For him, this national democratic state should rest on a tripod of principles. The first was a right to free and fair elections, a cause to which he dedicated his entire political life. Also on Tuesday, His Excellency joined First Lady Mrs. Arya Ali for the official unveiling of the Welcome to Guyana sign at a roundabout in Tamiri, East Bank, Demerara. The sign is part of the First Lady's National Beautification Project, which seeks to safeguard the country's scenic beauty while creating environmentally friendly locations for Guyanese to interact. The project is a collaboration with the Office of the First Lady, the Chedi Jagan International Airport and Impressions. The area surrounding the 20-foot illuminating monument has been landscaped escaped and 100 hanging flower baskets are installed on the lampposts leading to the roundabout. The project totals more than $25 million. Minister of Tourism, Honorable Onij Walron, Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Office for Investment, Dr. Peter Ramsarup and United States Ambassador Sarah Ann Lynch were also in attendance. President Ali and several government officials on Thursday joined other regional leaders in a special emergency meeting of CARICOM heads of government with specific focus on St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The virtual meeting aimed at facilitating discussions on the ongoing eruption of the volcano on St. Vincent. Guyana's delegation at State House also included Prime Minister Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips and a team from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, including Minister Honorable Hugh Todd. Chairman of CARICOM, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, is expected to further advance the regional response to the affected islands. President Ali has been leading relief efforts from the front since April 9, when the Soufriere volcano initially erupted, depositing large quantities of volcanic ash across the islands. Thousands of citizens, including Guyanese, have been displaced in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The day after the initial explosion, President Ali convened an emergency meeting with the Civil Defense Commission and the Private Sector Commission, where he underscored the importance of aiding the islands in the fastest possible time. Prime Minister Phillips coordinated the efforts, and by Wednesday, with the support of the private sector, the first ship, Miss Mina, set sail with over 300 tons of emergency supplies, which included food, water, and protective gear. A second shipment, containing a 20-foot container with 800 cases of tropical mist water, 1,152 cases of reinforced water and 400 cases of aqua mist water left early Thursday. A third vessel scheduled to carry more supplies will leave early this week. His Excellency Friday morning met Ambassador of the French Republic to Guyana, Antoine Jolie, and a group of French Army officials. 
The courtesy visit to the office of the president included Major General Javier Bousson, Senior Commander of the Armed Forces in French Guyana, and Brigadier General Thomas Lorne of the French Defense Procurement Agency. Other members of the delegation were Lieutenant Colonel Felipe Lamore, Defense Attache, Captain Virginie Lestage, International Relations Division, Joint Armed Forces in French Guyana, and Mr. Valentin Aventino, Country Desk Officer for Suriname and Guyana with the Directorate General for International Relations and Strategy. The contingent had met on Wednesday with Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Honorable Hugh Todd, where they discussed the strengthening of military cooperation links between Guyana and France. This has been the President's Diary, where we took a look at His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali's week of activities. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week.